Hey crafty people, it's Tasha, back with another video tutorial for Pear Blossom Press. Sometimes I get a little bit caught up in thinking that I need to make lights make sense in a design. Like I think that they need to be within an element like a light or a flame or a star. But really you can put a light anywhere you want to. It really doesn't have to make sense. <laughs> so today I'm pushing myself out of my comfort zone. Let's get right into it, starting with ink blending a background panel. I've got an A2 panel of Nina 80 pound and a selection of green Catherine Poole inks. I started with my darkest shade, blending it across opposite corners of my panel before going back in with a brighter green over the edges of that darkest shade. Rather than working in a halo type of layout where the darkest shade surrounds the whole panel, I'm going to work in more of a diagonal layout. Just for a change. So for that strip down the center, I'm using a couple of warmer toned greens as a nice contrast. Then I always work my way back through the colors, concentrating on those overlapping areas to make sure that I blended out the transitions. I aren't worried about achieving a perfectly smooth blend across the panel though because I know that you're not going to see any of that by the time that I'm finished with it. Now I'm happy with the colour payoff. I want to add some splatter with my metallic watercolour paints. I'm splattering on some gold with my thicker splatter brush and then I'm using a very fine brush with an old gift card to give me some really fine splatter of this metallic green shade. Side note, how many times did I say splatter then? <laughs> I'm going to set that off to the side to dry, which gives me time to work on my adorable monkeys. I've stamped them in Versafine Onyx Black, which takes a little longer to dry, making it perfect for heat embossing in my clear gloss embossing powder. One of the main reasons for me doing this is so that I don't have to worry about my alcohol markers smudging my ink. It's going to be encapsulated. <laughs> I am way too impatient to wait for it to dry, and this way I can just start my colouring straight away. I aren't doing anything terribly impressive with my colouring technique here. I'm just laying down my lightest shade all over, then adding my shadows in. So I'm using really simple lines of my mid-tone colour, and then even smaller lines of my darkest colour. Then I go back in for another round of the lightest shade all over, and that's going to soften the harshness of those shades next to each other. This is my tried and true method for colouring these little images and characters like this. So I did the same with the rest of my images, and I'll have all of my colour combinations listed in my supplies list. I don't have the coordinating dies for this set, so I fussy cut them and set them to one side. I've done a little die cutting off screen, so I've cut my background die from the ink blended panel that I made earlier. And then I also cut two layers of light green, which I'm going to use to give that frame more dimension. The sentiment is also from the same set and I've cut the shadow piece from that same light green and the words themselves from a darker green. I've adhered two layers of the words onto two layers of the shadow, both for some dimension and also to give the sentiment a little bit more stability. Importantly, I did not adhere the dot for the exclamation mark because that's where my light's going to be. But I need to make a hole there so I've got a self-healing cutting mat behind it and I'm starting with my craft knife just poking it straight in twice to make an X. That way I can push my pokey tool through and that's going to give me the perfect little hole for my light to shine through without the paper ripping. Let's get everything assembled now. So I chose another green cardstock to use behind the frame and I love how all these different shades work together like the leaves of the different trees. I'm using a single easy light today but the thinner and slightly longer style that comes as part of the combi pack. 
you just snap any extra bits away really easily and then add your battery plus side up and you are good to go. I like to tack it in place with a little bit of tape on the battery housing and then you add foam adhesive all around it. Now this is the best ever foam tape that we stock. It's the perfect depth to use with our lights but if you have standard foam tape you can use that but you'll just need to add two layers. You can see a bit of the light board poking out but that's easily going to be covered with my hanging monkey. Now I used some of that same foam adhesive behind him and adhered his tail onto the bottom of my sentiment die cut. For my other two monkeys, I used some thinner foam squares and I've got them sitting on top of the sentiment. I did make two bananas, but one of them got lost on my desk, so it's just the one now. Then I'm using my Pear Blossom Press gel pens to add some extra details and accents. So the white one I'm using to give some highlights to my image. I've got a pre-printed sentiment strip from Wow Embossing and it just happens to fit perfectly in this space at the bottom. I lined up the button for my light with the dot on the top of the eye so I'm adding some sparkle onto that dot with the gold gel pen from the pen set to identify where you need to press. And I'm so happy with how this came out. Um, I'm happy that I pushed myself to use a light in a less obvious way. Um, my very literal mind will still go to designs where the light makes sense. But I want to keep pushing myself to incorporate them in some more abstract ways too. If you aren't already subscribed to the channel, then please do consider it. And drop us a comment below to let us know what's your favourite way to include lights in your designs. Have a lovely, happy, safe and wonderful week. Stay crafty. Bye.